Welcome to the chaos. Hey. Oh, we missed that one. Such a white people thing. <laughs> I don't know how we got to three, but AJ's like, yo, what the f No, it's my like, first time. I'm just like, going. He's like, he's like <laughs> white people. Ass. Cut to his face. Like, 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 no, like, what is like, going on <laughs> here? What up, everybody? Welcome back to the chaos. I'm your host, Mikey Tailman, alongside my co-host, Danny J. Gomez. There you go. You Hello. Didn't, you didn't sing it. We're chilling right now, bro. I like it. Yeah. You look good. You look amazing. I try. Yeah, man. I like the blue on you. I think it's flattering. It is. Okay. I like it. Yo, today on the show, we have our curator extraordinaire. This guy is blowing up all over the scene. Humble human being and has done some amazing projects. And I was fortunate enough to catch one of them this past year. Our curator, Mr. AJ Gerard. What's up? Welcome, brother. brother. How are you? Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, excited. thank you for being on, man. Yeah. Like, you're, you're, we haven't had anybody on the show that it, in the industry you are and doing what you do. But like, yo, man, I was so blown away when I came, uh, the Shattered Glass exhibition, sure. uh, ex exhibition you did last year. Bro, I was blown away. What? Like, Thank it you. was so cool. It's <laughs> so, like, give us a little bit, like, how how did you get into this? Because you have such a crazy eye and have been around so many, mm. like, bro, you had a write-up in Vogue. Yeah. Like, that's, that's dope. Hey. Bro. Yeah. That's um, dope. I mean, I'm not super shocked yet. Like, I mean, I'm shocked, but I'm like, it feels like it's all supposed to be happening. You know what I mean? That's I was the, like, oh, man, yeah, I can't wait, like, to, like, I can't wait to hear this conversation. Yeah, bro, um, this is going to be awesome. It's that belief in yourself, yeah. man. Yeah, it's just like physically starting to manifest, but I feel like I've had these ideas as a person, like I wanted to be this type of person for a long time. Great. Um, I was like in a sports family. I grew up in that type of you know structure, but it was always community. Um, and they kind of saw that in me early. Like I was weird, but it was like weird was quiet and like wasn't super like a jog. But I was like thought you know more into my like intimate thoughts and stuff like that. And I'd read a lot. And they eventually put me in art school, and I think that's when I started to become extremely extroverted. And so I think it was like, yeah, okay, well. How do I mix both art and then like people? Because I just love being around a lot of people. I was always excited to be like around family or friends, especially people who aren't like interested in art. My favorite thing to do is like put them on or put them into it. Um, I mean, there's a lot to be said, but I guess now being in LA and, and feeling like people are responding to the world that I kind of had in my head. It's dope. It's been motivating me. <laughs> uh, yeah. And thanks for and for coming and no it man, that way. De yo, definitely. Like, <laughs> yeah. it, it was super cool. So, like, okay, you, so you you who put you into art school? My mom. Well, my mom. Like, so we. I'm from LA, but I moved to Texas pretty early, and my mom's coworker was like, "You should put that kid in this art school." Like, it was a it was one of those like performing arts private schools. You had to like apply like Juilliard, like have a portfolio. And I did theater and then eventually went into visual arts and was like, yo, this is my like lane. Like I'm happy. And you know, we didn't have sports programs. So I didn't all of that part of like, you know, my parents being into basketball and stuff like that, it just how old went you? out the window. Me? I'm yeah. in my thirties. No, how old were you then? Oh, when I was like maybe what, sixteen, seventeen? I I was old enough to still think that I was from LA, which was why Texas was so hard. Cause I wasn't I making imagine. friends. Yeah. <laughs> I could imagine. I just and you know, that's a football driven like state. So I was just like weird i was really People i would expect yeah. you to be, become yeah I, I mean this is like before the hair before the, the style like it was just like just figuring myself out like brick by brick and so i think when i got into art school and it was like you know getting dropped off and my mom always says like kids had like purple hair like nose rings or whatever that's when i started to flourish like that was like that was my idea Your of like people. varsity yeah. you know what i mean i found my community that's cool though like it took us what till our mid thirties to figure out what we want to do in sixteen. He's like, oh no no, this is it. Oh, like yeah, that. Yeah. Like what was that like as a six? Because bro, at sixteen you don't like. I still don't know. Sh at thirty four. That's fair. At sixteen, <laughs> I thought I knew it all. I knew fucking jack. Sh so like, how were you? Like, I mean, what was that feeling like to be yeah. like, nah nah, this is it. Like at sixteen, like that's. I mean, I feel like I paid my dues. I always use the idea like I'm still earning stripes in the art world. I'm still earning stripes in the world in general. But I feel like I paid my dues to to be here if that makes any sense because i was like i used to hide my books i used to hide I used to be really like shy and like reserved about but you know you want to blend in and have friends you don't want people to think that like you know being weird is it's it could be derogatory and i think or uh, unsafe too because i remember like i didn't have a car i was riding the bus and you didn't want to get beat up for being like a nerd or art kid or whatever so i tried to like cope with that and i think that funny enough the only way i could like express my creativity was through like sneakers so i was always like super interested in like super S colorful well yeah i mean but like super into color like because i couldn't afford the rest of my outfit so i'd save all my money for like dunks and stuff like that and then i'd be shopping at the thrift store so it's like i'm trying to be like everybody else but it just kept exploding until it was like 
embrace it. This is it. This is what you have to do. And so graduated from high school, went to Howard and studied art history and pushed it in there even further. And now I'm in LA pushing it um, as hard as I can. And it's been cool. Like, I mean, even being here is full circle in yeah. like, in a way, you know, to be like able to be a, a voice for my community. How much do you attribute you being so comfortable in your own skin early, knowing what you wanted to be, being comfortable in like your style, who you are, has really helped you transition into like where you are now? Yeah, that's a Cause, great question. Because I mean, uh, the artwork, like you're saying, like like weird, but like it's kind of subjective. Like, oh, for I mean, sure. Art is, there's so many different types of art, but how are you able to really slide into that and um, be so comfortable? I mean, I look to you two as like examples of people who are like in my community, but don't necessarily, like, you know, they're not always thinking about art but they're good people and like the energy is right. So funny enough, like I knew who I was, but I'm always battling with like not being like represented or seen in spaces for real. Cause I think now I'm like, like, you know, whether being black in the space or being young in the space or being into, into colors and sneakers and stuff like that. And, you know, imagining art history being like older white men with suits and like money and background, you're always on one end of the, the stick, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, but I think for me, it was like, I felt more, most comfortable having a lot of people with me through this journey. So I'd always try to like stay like them, if that makes any sense. I never tried to like change too quickly to become like the environment that I was in. Um, does that make so, sense? Yeah. yeah, okay. that's, <laughs> okay. hell yeah. That leads me to, um, I'm always curious about the, the thought process you had as a kid. Yeah. Like the art that you saw in your head. Because when I was a kid, I like I was mimicked. Uh, movie stars and, yeah, and for sure. movies, like Rocky came out. I went home. I was yeah, boxing sure. all night for like a week. Ninja Turtles <laughs> came sure. out. I made nunchucks out of the toilet paper rolls for and sure. shit. You know? No, for and sure. And like, I always picture everyday scenarios as a movie. So I, I, I'm curious to see how your mind was thinking at that time and what kind of art you were making in your head. I mean, I'm, I'm heavily inspired by music, I think. You know what I mean? So like, I don't mean what, like, Missy Elliott and Ludacris. I mean, we're going back in time, but like those are like that people. That was our generation, yeah. You know though, what I mean? Man. So like, yeah. that, oh, yeah. that's gonna. Happen I don't know. Because it was on you. I think that like the way that they were like so larger than life and big. Like I just knew like that's when you know this. I, my real name's Antoine, but I like kind of used AJ as a moniker before I could really feel confident. It was like creating this thing or this yeah, yeah. person that like let me break through um Antoine sounds like, like an art name it is a right, Antoine it is. <laughs> it all, I think yeah I mean it's just it's like you know I had this background in theater too and I think for me it was like you know maybe not not saying what I do is fake by all means or by any means but um learning to be comfortable i remember one of my like older friends would be like you know bro just like find that thing in your head and like hold on to it and push through your fears, like push through it all. So I think again, like what people are getting of me now is something that I've always known I could do. Um, I just never would have thought I could actually like do it by just being myself. It was weird, you know? Yeah. Like I, I, I was always like, dude, you should have been in business. Especially when I was in college and my parent was like, how are you about to pay for, like, what are we doing? You know what I mean? Like, why are we art history? Like yeah. what? Like, what are you doing? And I didn't even make art. Like that was the crazy thing. I just loved listening to stories around artists. Okay, okay. And they were like, dude, you're gonna have to figure out how to pay for this. But- um, And you, you did. I did. I mean, it was like one of those things where it's like, you know, like anybody else, like, I, I believed in what I was doing. So I was like, I only want to do, you know, do what makes me happy. That's been my whole thing is like passion, passion. And and when it runs out, then I'll hopefully do something else. But right now, like this feels right, you know? Nice. Yeah. But, that, but when people say art, like you, you automatically think of like, oh, painting a picture. It's like, oh, for sure. you know, the concept of <laughs> art is finding something that you're passionate about and engulfing yourself in it. That yeah. is art. You doing everything as an, uh, as an actor, that is a an art form oh, for like sure. it there's such a small complex like art is just this is like no man you can make anything art as yeah. long as you're passionate about yeah it. yeah my thing isn't even like making art i actually freak out a lot when i see like blank canvases um i had to take like art producing classes to get my like degree but i just first of all it's expensive and then second of all it's just like <laughs> how do you say what's in your mind you know and then also as i was starting to learn more about all the different types of art i was like well what kind of person and what would i want to do and it was recently that someone said to me like aj you're a social sculptor you're one of those people who can like really make the way the room feels right and that's your art like you oh, bring nice. people into this and you make them feel at home and when they don't know you're okay with talking to them about it and yeah that's so i don't know that's a big term and abstract but no, it makes sense. It's yeah. like when people, you know, when a bartender's like, he's a artist, man. Yeah. He makes these drinks. Like you can, 
like you said, if you put passion into something you love and you you're creating something that's out of the the, the box a it's little art. bit, yeah. yeah, it's art, yeah. man. Like there's so many things, and like you know, man, art's beautiful. So it's like if you can look, if you can take anything and change that perspective into an artistic view, man, you can do anything with it. It doesn't matter w what situation you're in, what you're applying it to. It's like you can really make anything happen. Mm -hmm. That's the best thing about like living in LA is that. People come here because they don't fit in like where they grew up. Oh, for sure. People think of them as weird, right? Yeah. But you come out here and you show people like, hey, this is my weird side. And they're like, wow, you can you can make a career out of this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you, it, you, say, yeah, you embrace being weird and you look at where you are now. Right. Most of the people that are inspiring to me aren't, I love artists. I'm not going to say this in a rude way, but most people who are inspiring to me aren't necessarily just artists. I like working, honest, real people who have like stories and who come from places my target audience isn't the art world. I always say that. Like, if you already know what you're looking at, then you probably don't need to do this with me. Like, oh, okay. I'm more into getting, like, you know, the parent into this who works really hard, just, like, needs a, a relief or, like, that kid who probably is going to be, like, a super dope creative if, like, somebody just gave them, I always say, like, gave them a full palette. I work with a lot of young artists now, and I'm like, you just got to get out of this imposter syndrome thing. Nobody mm -hmm. believes that what they're doing is worth anything or that'll be recognized. So I'm always like... That's my target audience. Like, right. and if you, if you don't do art, like just to know that like there's more out there than just like working and droning through our lives. Like that's that's what I think is dope. Yeah. Like especially like- Were we I, supposed to be talking about art today? I feel bro, like- Bro, like, the, the, <laughs> the best part about this was talking about yeah. everything. But like, okay. <laughs> but, but not, I mean, we're talking about art, but, we're, but what you're representing is that, yo man, you embrace being weird. You embrace something you love and you're doing what- one percent of people get to do you get to yeah. do what you want as a passion and you're making a difference so like you talked about your community like talk about some of the things that you that you curate because you create and put a lot of focus into the black community and really showcasing black artists and man that's dope yeah and i appreciate you i mean i think when i first did the show that a lot of the people in the art world recognized me for i was actually at a super low point um this was like during the height of like the black lives matter protest and i remember coming out actually with you and like being in these spaces yeah. and feeling <laughs> super exhausted it was the only place you could see your family the only it was like also during the pandemic and we were we weren't supposed to be outside but like everything was happening so we all came outside and it was like you know oh you know I remember when like they were starting to put up posts on social media like these are the places that you can protest throughout yeah. LA. like if you're on this side of town oh, yeah, over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was like and a meeting like, spot yeah, meet at this park at 3 p.m yeah then, yeah man that was the beginning of my inspiration yeah. to be honest for that show uh, it was this idea of like the only time i could see people in my community was when we were fighting for our rights and it was weird to me because i thought that we had already done that you know i was kind of um we all thought it was over right and it's like here we are in this new generation like pushing these same things out so when I got approached with the opportunity to do the show, me and my co-curator kind of walked through those ideas. And personally, I was just like, we got to give those same people somewhere to go slash grow. Cause like everybody was just like so sad and it was just, it was a weird, awkward time. And it was like, you know, that lull when things started to kind of go back to normal, it was like, what did we just do? Like all the people who put like the black squares up, like it was all like just a lot of signaling. I, I wanted to to take some effort and some time to just really give people something fresh. You know, when that first show came like came out, we didn't even know if it was gonna actually happen in real life because it was uh during the pandemic and all the artists were like, Is this a virtual show? Like, should we should I really be making work? And constantly we just kept saying, like, no, make work for the audience, like make work for your community, make something that you know that's gonna give them joy and make sense. And last thing I'll say on that thought, it was uh, when we opened up, it was on the first day of spring. So it was kind of weird because like all of this new energy came out and it was like, people were still there with their mask on, but like you could just feel uh, the smiles in the community and the radiating through. Like these are artists first time showing. The gallery was so happy because he hadn't seen people like this in such a long time. Um, me and my co-curator, I think we're just like, damn, we did it. I'm still kind of going through that. like. LA looks so different to me now. Yeah. yeah, all the stuff that I used to think was like super ugly or even when I have like super weird low times, I'd be like, these are the moments that make those moments. So you gotta go through this part now so that like the next idea is like just as honest as that idea was, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah, it's, it's a cool to think though, because like, yo, I met you at a protest. So just, just to be like, yo, like me, JP was with us too. Yeah, like yeah. me, JP, you, and your cousin, we bounced around to like I don't know, like a ton of different protests. Yeah. But just to hear that your one of your ideas for something that worked out so amazingly came from when we all met each other. Like, yeah, man, that's really 
fucking cool. Like, yeah. no, even when I go to art moment, panels, yeah. like I talk about this to that art, stuffy art world. Um, I admired that you guys from all these different backgrounds and cultural uh, perspectives took time to take take up space. And I think that that's what gave me bravery to go into the art world. And it was like, we could have made a show on anything. I always tell that to people like, uh, we could have been a show on pottery. We could have been a show on like basket weaving, whatever. I thought it was relevant and we thought it was relevant to talk about the people who are like the most hurt, which is where the shattered glass idea came from. For me, you know, in LA, like you always see like broken bottles on the ground or like trash. And I always think about the young people who have to grow up in that. That's like their reality. Um, you know, so we wanted to build something that was actually a, a larger story of that, not just like hood stories and misfortune and sadness, even though we had some real stories in that show that actually did that, like Mr. Wash, there was a lot of stuff that real life things. I think it was really about beauty, you know? So, so what kind of stuff did you have, like for people who are not familiar with the art shows or exhibits? And oh, stuff? for sure. And just that one or just in general, like in light. Uh, Let's talk about the first one and then like oh, other sure. stuff that you've created yeah. after. Oh, for sure. I mean, shout out to Mr. Wash. Mr. Wash was an artist uh, who actually served like 20 plus years in prison during the uh, Reagan war on drugs. He created a Kobe Bryant painting that was so iconic for our show. And this was like right after Kobe passed, like a year. You know, that's stunned LA. Like we were all grieving and- I think everybody remembers where they were when they heard it. Yeah. I didn't think it was real. I mean, I still think about like, there's some effects of like people, celebrities passing. It was like Michael Jackson, Kobe Bryant, where I was like, nah, whatever. And when it happened, it was like, and mind you, I'm not from a sports family, but I just know his cultural impact. I mean, I am from a sports family, but I'm not into sports. His cultural impact was so large. So anyways, Mr. Wash painting a, painted a painting of Ms., of Kobe Bryant um, that was so intricate and so detailed. It had like the Staples Center and like the, the plane crash and the rings that he wore, the championship. And um, it was one of those things where I was like, this is going to be dope because anyone who doesn't love doesn't think they love art right now will come into this room and see this and immediately have their own relationship to this painting which is what we can expand upon so to me that was like a, a dope like and anybody can and my niece it's like seven that was like her favorite painting yeah 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 <laughs> so, and so. with the shattered glass what did that like like how did that translate into the room mm, i mean a different audience for the art world. It was like young, it was an energetic, enthusiast. You know, we were talking to people who knew what they were looking at, but most importantly, was this open call to like, bring your friends, bring bring your family, bring whoever, bring. I had people like after it was over, I honestly feel like, and I'm, this is when I like, I always have to preface, I have zero ego about this, but it felt like LA had like kissed me on the cheek. Like I was walking around like a whole different light and it wasn't about me. Yeah, yeah. Everyone involved their ecosystems changed. People believed in what they were doing. They were like, yeah, son, you know, my friends were in there. I've seen this guy since he was working at a, like, I remember someone being like, he used to work at Blix. He used to help me out at Blix and no shit. he hated his no job. Way. Now he's like a, on the wall in, the, in this big way. So all of, I mean, we had relationships in that show. We had like siblings in that show. We had all spans of like family and community. So for me anyways, it just felt like all the things about LA that, kind of make you go damn i'm just what am i doing here i don't fit in it flipped yes you know like oh. people were like honking the horn like i'm never i was like out <laughs> someone like honked their horn at me like yo aj and it was dope because it's like i don't think about me in that way i just think about like what other young person probably needs a representation like me to think like shit i can do that right. that chain of reaction because like for me that was pharrell back in the day or whatever yeah. like, i'm like dude if i just if I, if I get enough money to buy this fit, I can look just like him. Yeah. Now I think that the rules are so different. It's like, oh, absolutely. Maybe it can be an art curator. You know, we talked about the vert. Like anybody can connect to this now. So, yeah, man, everything, everything you're saying is dope. And then you're, you're talking about people that you've like idolized, somebody like a Pharrell. But now you're kind of running in those like circles, though. Yeah. Like you, you, like right, like that. <laughs> that's gotta be like you wow. look up to somebody now. Like yo, you're being featured in Vogue, which is a congratulations, man. That's a huge nah, fucking dick. <laughs> come on, baby, come on. <laughs> that's what, what's wild Check about. Post. Nah, yeah. you know what's wild about that one was like came out. Well, I was I was in the mist. We're in Miami. The show from LA was so successful that the gallery decided to take it to Basel, and we actually wrapped at um, this like super epic gallery space, um, the Moore Building. And it was, it's the last art show that will ever happen in that space. Now it's getting converted to a whole other like business. But um, 
I had like a jacket that some friends had put me in because I don't, funny enough, like fashion. You know, like, yeah. I, I, I like I love things when people give them to me and they mean <laughs> a lot to me. But I don't like go out and seek like Besides the sneakers. next look. No, even with even the sneakers, sneakers. To be honest, like when I first like started in the art world, legit, like my style used to be like funny enough. Like my friends were like very fresh friends about because I used to go to the thrift stores and I try to pull out anything that was Nike. So it was all that old eighties Nike. Yes. But in my mind, I was like, let's run it. So I used to wear like crazy track jackets. <laughs> all the colors and they're like tone it down you know started coming to la circles it's more like chill people eat ramen and work out yeah. so <laughs> like i gotta like not look super tech you know country so um now yeah i mean these are people who but i always do this with them you know that's the thing because like, you're yeah. just you thanks yeah yeah, yeah if you're yeah. just authentically you like people that are authentically them are gonna relate to it like those people that said oh i'm weird and embraced it bro those are the people that are in the spotlight for sure. are the like pharrell for sure. i'm sure he's super weird yeah and he came to the show it was i'm so like i was out so basically they say come outside you yeah, put that jacket that you were holding on i was like all right i put the jacket on the guy took a photo the next day i woke up and, and people were sending me the story like yo you're in vogue right now and i'm like yo i actually am so out of the moon right now you ever just like you could be so in your head where you feel like every little thing is like an issue and then i think what that moment did to me was like just zoomed me all the way out so it's like i'm looking at my life and earth like from the moon so like all the stuff that used to stress me out like it doesn't anything that like feels like a low like i'm like oh it's just a part of you just gotta hold on like five more seconds and it's gonna like smoothen out you mm -hmm. know so yeah. i feel like my my wings are a little bit more spread, you know? Oh, I mean? for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so who are some of the people that you've looked up to that you're now getting to work with? And like, what's that like to have somebody that you're so en enamored by and in awe by and is like a hero to you and now you're like shooting the shit like this with them on a regular basis or teaching I mean, them about art? Yeah, I mean, for sure, like, there's, there's like, you know, without getting emotional with the answer, like, I think a part of it is like a lot of the people I admire aren't physically here with us anymore that's always the reality too it's like um like my aunt was a huge person i used to talk to a lot um when virgil like essentially was looking i think to my storyline like he'd been put in touch with like what i was doing virgil Ablo. yeah i remember what being uh so i was at a museum and one of my friends had with well, that first 10 pack that came out he had the prestos on he was with his family and we weren't friends at the time i just saw the guy's sneakers and i was like bro oh my god he's this amazing sneaker he finessed me got me in like i got the shoe and i'm calling everybody like, i got these shoes i got these shoes so i wear these shoes everywhere because i was like that was my whole thing was like Wait, hold on. virgil abelow gave you a pair of all fight ones no, no, no. I bought these pair. Okay. And then I was like giving art tours in his sneakers. I was getting in trouble because like I couldn't, I wasn't supposed to wear that as a uniform, yeah. but I was like, no, it's my thing. I have to be able to be accessible to these kids. Like I want them to know that they could be right. I think he caught, I think someone put him like in touch with what I was talking about. And we're talking like over a span of like a year or two. Um, most recently, like closer to the passing, I was sent to Harvard. I was invited to come out like with IDK and all this team to to give people and art kids uh, a lesson in art history and like at Virgil's show, how ironic, that's right? Sick. He was supposed to do the tour with me and walk around. At least that's how I was told about it. And I was so gassed. Like I was like, oh my God, I'm finally gonna meet him. What do I wear? And I was like, AJ, wear the shoes that you were giving the tours in. Like, let them know this is for real. The beat up and everything. And, you know, at that time I didn't know he was falling ill and he said, I couldn't make it. The team was like, do you feel confident in doing it by yourself? But I still didn't know that he was sick. So I'm like, oh yeah, man, like, let's do it. I thought it was a test. I thought he's going to pop out on me. Like, yo, you did right. You answered those things correctly. The kids had a great time. I had a great time and I got a DM from him and it was just like, yo, keep killing it. You know, sorry, I couldn't make it. Like, and so then I took my shot and I was like, bro, like you were someone that I looked at. I was wearing these shoes even when I didn't know what what the hell was gonna happen to my life and what I was doing. Like how Jordan got banned, that was me, but like in the art world, you know what I mean? Like I was walking around like, and they were like, stop doing that. Um, and he's just like, kept going. Moving to Miami, I got invited to the fashion show. It was like, oh, bro, it's like literally got like chills, you know? Like I'm like, this is it, this is my moment. And then I got the call from Nike and they're like, he's not gonna be able to do this panel with you tonight. Like, it's like, he's gone. And I was oh. like distraught. Everybody was, I was also like in a position where I was just starting to get looked at 
by my community as like a figure. And I was like, this is interesting because now I feel frustrated because I'm like, I feel like I'm going to lie to them. I'm going to look like I just like gassed it. Like, you know, obviously this wasn't about me, yeah. but I had to react quickly. And I remember asking the building like, yo, can we put his face on the side of the building? Like in honor of, because he was going to, he was such a big part of our show. Um, and they put a, a quote up on the side of the Moore building. Mind you, last time it was happening, it was just like, you know, it was just, like I said, like people that I admire aren't always physically here with me. And I always yeah. ask myself questions and I knew I was going to be here with y'all today. And I was like, I always come back to like, what makes you feel comfortable and like what grounds you? So I've been, you know. Yeah. I mean, dude, that's, I mean. That was a long story. No, 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 like, bro. Like still processing dude, it all. Yeah, myself. yeah. Virgil yeah. Abloh f***ing DMs you, you did like, and for people who don't understand, who might not know Virgil like in depth, like we just talked about. He is such a figure that has such an impact yeah. on the fashion world. And yeah. he was like, <laughs> yo, know, he, he was the head designer for um Louis. Like, Louis Vuitton. Yeah. Like what the guy, I mean, sneakers, bro. If you see somebody wearing a pair of off-white sneakers now, like that's it. Like sneaker, sneaker game has been huge. Jordans have been huge. Never thought it could be <laughs> elevated. And then nah, Virgil yeah. goes, I'm going to add this to it. And now Jordan, Jordan brand sneakers are here. Jordan brand off white sneakers by Virgil are up here. Like, and there's so much art history to that that I was able to like spit when this was this particular one was coming out because it's thinking about like Duchamp and all this like <clears throat> branded that it's like so in short it's like you know the story of a or of a Jordan but he added that twist by like the shoelaces making you question certain things you think you already know and I just want to add like the other last emotional like cherry on top I got the friends and family shoe from him or from that team which was crazy. So I finished Miami and I was like exhausted, like literally empty. I had nothing left and came home and, and I sent my mails to my mom and my parent was like, you have a box in the corner. I'm like, all right, open up the box. I see the LV Nike thing and literally started like, like crying. Cause like, wow, it felt like a call and response. Like it was like, you shot the shot. I saw you win the game winning point. Like here's your ring. You know what I mean? And so it was like one of those things. And, and it's wild because then all my homies are like, are you going to sell it? Are you going to flip it? You know, the culture is real. Like, you can't flip that money. shit. No, like, but I couldn't because it felt like so it was like my like, you know, like when you see Jordan with like the big, I was like, this is like my thing. That's and, a family heirloom that was like passed down. Put that down. in a case. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 The display. And even on the flip side, like even with the like idea of like money and this is so parallel to like how art can flip for so much more money or whatever. Um my mom was like, Loki probably did that on purpose too. So like you could go to college, you could buy, a, you could put that towards that's, a that's crib right. or like something, you know, right. dope too. So I toy with that a lot. Like, what does that mean? How much do like, you think those shoes are worth? Like my color, I have the red one. Um, I think the only person that I've seen with it is DJ Khaled when he like went extreme and like wore it at the yeah, Staples yeah. game with I the pillow, pillow underneath, underneath. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I heard mine was like at 40K, but I don't know. I don't know. I can't even think about and it I in think the monetary. If you, if you hold on to it. Yeah. I honestly don't even think about it in the monetary. I just think about it like it'll always be a symbol of like live, alive or past that like if you do dope shit genuinely from your heart, like how big your world can go and then how small it could come back to. Like it's a shoe. It's just an item. But it holds so much weight to me and, you know, a symbol. I don't know. That's sick. Yeah. That's fucking sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I like the way yo, this no, man, like, that's just, flowing. I didn't no, even man, that, like, think we were gonna. I thought you were gonna be like, what's your like favorite uh, painting. I'm, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I got a bottle of Moet that is the Virgil, you know, do not drop. No, I'm like, that. oh, I thought that was cool. No, I got a is. memento. No. This motherfucker <laughs> got a pair sent from Virgil. No. Like, no, man, that's super dope, though. Like, no. that's really cool. The only thing I could say, and I appreciate that. The only thing that I could say, it never really changes how you feel. Feel like you always have like, and it's not like me and Virgil are so close, but it's just in any representation of like you miss someone. It's like you'll never be able to no. get that no thing back. So that's the thing that always. Um, but that I mean, that's gotta yeah. be like a com like somebody on that caliber that you've always looked up to. Like that's gotta be a confirmation of like, yo, man, I made the right choice. I'm doing the right thing. Yeah, I'm making an impact for Green sure. Lights. Imposter Green syndrome, light. you yep. know. I think we battle with that. And I'm not different. I battle with imposter syndrome all the time, which is why I think I try to tell artists like in their studio visits, I'm like, yo, like I'm sure with every bad thought, you probably had a really good one. It's kind of like, which one do you amplify more? So all of this is good because it makes me go like, oh yeah, AJ, keep going. Well, like, me, this is an honest you, story. You said imposter syndrome. Cause yo, let's be real, man. Anybody listening to this right now is like, yo, this motherfucker 
especially if they know this world and the art world and the fashion world is like, yeah, this dude is sitting at the top of it. Oh, How would you have imposter syndrome? So it's like, yo, like if you don't mind being honest about that, yeah. like, because I'm, sh I'm sure we're here in the great side. I'm sure it's got to be stressful as f trying to put on something like this at the caliber of Nike being involved, Pharrell being involved. Like that's got to be a lot of pressure as well. Man, I mean, thank you. Yeah. I, so 2021 was like my like, sh like, like I felt like again, like I was looking at it from like the moon. 2022, like January, I had like a hard depression. Cause it was like, how do you follow that up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think Yo, uh, people, there's a high. Yeah, and it's but, a but high. There's a high. There still has to be a down. I was in my place in my apartment, exhausted. It took me a long time to like move physically. I was on the couch, just like because you know, if you've been to Miami, Basel, like anything Miami is just like party. Da, 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 da. It's a lot. I was like drinking every day. I was outside. I was like at the art parties. And a lot of times when I didn't know what to say, I would just start eating just to like look like I had like something to do and not have to, you know, talk about everything. I gained all that weight. And then I was like <laughs> dealing with all this stuff. And it took me a minute. It really took me a minute. It took me. Um, so like I promised myself when I was in Miami on that yacht. I remember not like on oh, my yacht, but like I promised myself Cause like that's a whole other story, but I was I was like so odd in that moment. Cause you have like all these rappers and all these famous people, and I was like just me. Didn't have my cousins, didn't have my family, didn't have nothing. I was like just me, <clears throat> holding on to like, well, I know I'm supposed to be here. I was invited, but I felt weird, and I promised myself I was like, yo, you're working so hard. You need to work on a personal life. And so when I came back home after like shaking it off, I was like, let me start fixing some of the shit that's wrong with my family. So I reached out to my brother that I hadn't talked to for a long time, apologized to some of my friends about how like I was so MIA because I had to work. I was like, you know, when rappers are like, I'm in the studio, like in the art world, it was like, I was out at openings, at things that I couldn't come to like birthday parties. I couldn't come to like graduations. And it looked like I didn't care. But in reality, I was like, if I don't get this win, you won't even care if I'm in the room or not. You know what I mean? So I just went back in time and started trying to shape those relationships a little bit better. And now I stand here in 2023 and I feel a lot more confident that like I aligned it all. You know what I mean? Like my family's so proud of me. I think my friends are like, they get it. Everybody gets it now. Like it's a path. I get it now. I'm like running now. I'm watching like what I eat. But, you know, I get it. Like we're all, we all. I'm just saying I'm not exempt. No one's no. exempt. Yeah. Right. <laughs> look, looking back on all that, now that you're at this point, are you able to look back and see like some of those moments where you probably chose um, an event over friendships or family or see some of those hard struggles and those hard times that happen and be like, no, that makes sense. I get why or that had to happen for me to be here. Does that kind of run through your head a lot? Yeah, I mean... I don't, I try not to be a person who lives with like regret for sure. I try to be as honest and present regret, as possible. It was like, it was a lesson like, oh, I needed to learn that lesson for me to be here. Yeah. I mean, I just say that to say like LA is one of those places where people like friendships you lose quickly because people don't always get it. So some people's priority is like the party. Some people's priority is like the handshake connection, da, 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 da. I, so yes, I think that I look back in my life and I look at my life and I'm like, for every fall I've taken, it was worth it. Cause like now I can tell the story and it's like, honestly, and I look at people and I'm like, I'm here and I'm the rock star, the renegade you think I might be, but it took me a long time to realize like those mistakes shaped that. It wasn't just all the wins. It was all the stuff that like getting fired from the job, losing the friend who didn't understand what I was doing. You know what I mean? Like being more, more direct with my family. Like we can't keep being like isolated and like siloed, you know, like my family's so sports and I'm so art that it caused one of those things was like, no one wanted to cross the bridge, you know? And I had to like cross, I had to build the bridge and then cross it. And it was very scary, but now me and my siblings were like super good and they know what I do. Like I brought them to my show, like, yo, this is me. You and did. it was like, oh, that's why you were drawing in the corner like that. Da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> You got to be brave if you're going to make a world. You just got to be brave. A, that's a line yeah. right there. I, pl I applaud you for, you know, coming back from such a high moment in your life where you're like surrounded by all this greatness. And then you had like, oh, I need to work on me. Yeah. And then you, need, and then you worked on your family. And, to, you know, it, that's brave because it's, hard, it's harder to talk to, I think, family than your friends. Oh, for sure. And you have a problem. You know, because these are the people who like remember when 
you know, yeah. like they know you before whatever you sculpt on social or other people's ideas of you. Like, so that was the charm. That was the, the, the shame I think I was holding was like, I wish I could be in these rooms with Pharrell and, and introduce them to my parent or my, my brother or whatever. But like, they didn't know what I was, they didn't know what I was up to. So I was just running this course. And now I try to like, if I have an opening, I'm like, pull up and like specifically call them right before like you're still coming like really try to like slow down because it's not so much about like me needing to be in the front anymore this has been a year where i've been able to like shape a lot of artists and put their stories out so i can like be in the back burner and i think for me it's like that's even more dope because like you get to survive like streetwear culture survive like you know losing all these people and like kind of taking it to the next level you know like i can go look for the next aj now and like try to light that kid's fire you know um it's amazing your your like lack of ego is is, is so and he, impressive and you're on that <laughs> so <laughs> impressive saying, like, and you're on right? that like high level man. yeah man i mean you could have gone the complete other path and somebody anyone would have been like yeah i mean that's you know people get famous and their ego gets big yeah. but like you like you like rewinded the ego you know like i think i was that i've you, bro, you've always be been honest, like that right i feel like i was the dopest when i was in that artsy weird thing because i didn't have anybody to impress right. i was just doing it it was the most authentic. it was just authentic bro so like i was wearing more sneakers i was i was doing my thing with the hair i was reading my i was doing the same thing i do every day but it was just for me and sometimes i always check myself especially when i'm like in the gym the gym is so hard for me to like stay like in it because i'm like oh man i just really want to eat a burger so bad yeah. it's like you don't want to get back to what was the the, the issue with right it now, yeah. no, right like oh man so i just say that to say like uh the zone of what I'm trying to do now is to get back to that version of myself that was so super authentic, didn't care what anybody thought in the sense of like I was doing it. Because mm -hmm. now I think a lot of it is like you get afraid to make the wrong public mistake or choice. Because I'll have moments where I go like on black on social media out of nowhere. And it's only because I get hit every day with like, can we get you on this panel? Can we get you? And it's like, damn, I'm actually like, tired it's overwhelming you know i was like You're yesterday great. dude my eyes i was like just at the store and i was like my eyelids feel so heavy right now because when i leave the thing i go read because i don't ever want to look like i'm not like you know like you get fed the compliment so then you're like okay now you're the guy but you got to get better you know like you just got to get better better mm -hmm. better so then i'm not handling like chill right i don't know that's, that's this is so therapy. funny. This that's is free so, therapy. It's so funny you say that. It's like oh, that's the best thing about fucking therapy. no, man. It, like, that, <laughs> like I think we've noticed that, and then me and him noticed that this the last year and this year as we're doing this podcast, like it's therapeutic to get this out and have these conversations, especially having the conversation with people that are on the vibration you're on. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think people realize how therapeutic that actually is to feel like you're understood. Oh, for sure. I just also am super happy about this, like living on and like in this home and in this moment with you guys because. I don't know, I'm, I'm always admiring like people who like work within their own community and not necessarily like, you know, I always say, and I, this is gonna sound crazy, but I like, I, got, I, was, I was in the New York Times and I actually didn't like being interviewed by them versus like walking with people who knew me, even if they only knew me from like a quick second, that whole thing was like, tell me why I should know you. And what, why, do, why are you important? I felt like I was being like, like I asked them to do it and they asked me to do right. it. Right. Versus here, it's like, we can riff. Yeah. You know what I'm it's saying? And like you're growing with the people, you know? Yeah. They, know. they have a way of making you feel small. Oh, for when sure. You, you're like, the art oh. world is good at it. Right, yeah. right. Oh, for sure. I mean, They're the, great in, at the it. Industry, entertainment industry, yeah. yeah. Entertainment yeah. industry, regardless of what it is, is good at making you feel small. Yeah. Was, yeah. I mean, talk about yeah. imposter syndrome constantly. I did want to ask you, because you talked about you know, after all that, you went back to your family. And I think a lot of people who grow up a certain way with family, then move out here and become successful. It's hard for the family to adjust because they still see you in one way, <laughs> even though you're living in another way. Oh, and for they sure. expect you to adapt to them. Oh, for sure. So like, what, bro, because I can go on for days. Which one? Camera, bro. Which one is the camera? Because <laughs> look right I'm in like, there yo, and this it. is like, I think about my older brother. Sorry, I'm saying this, but like literally he, um, so he gets excited he'll facetime me or call me and like tell people like you know my brother's working with this person and you're working with people who like privacy is king the higher you get up yeah. they don't want like everything whatever and he'll be like yeah so like my brother was like hanging out with him last night and like talking to girls talking to friends and so like i still haven't had the conversation with you yet maybe this is like how i do it but <laughs> it's really hard because they they are looking at it through the screen 
And I think what ends up happening is like, I'll meet people like even in the art world or like musicians, celebrities where I'll meet them in the same way. And I'm like, the urge is you're like, yo, and then it's like, yo, you, but you're like here now. You're in the same you're room with here. them. Yes, yeah, so you gotta chill. Yeah. But I'm so used to seeing some of these people through a screen, you know right. what I'm saying? Or even like through a magazine, like it's a date, you know, like. How many people would think that you're like, cause you're, you're so down to earth and humble, but I'm sure there's so many people out there, friends out there that like, when you talk about this or who you were with, or yeah, I was in Miami with Virgil, they think you're, you're bragging. They're like, oh, this douche. And it's like, yo, you're not bragging. You, you asked me what I did this weekend. You asked me about how the show was. That's what the show was. So like, why are you going to get at me for this? It's like you asked. I'm still grappling with that. Um, like, how do you... And I actually came up with Jordan Brand a lot. So I worked with Jordan Brand on a sneaker. It was like a, a rebellion air shoe where they're like, oh, we kind of like coined you for this. We want to tap you in as the as the face. And when we're negotiating like how we do that rollout. I was like, I want it to be about me and the art as well. But I also want it to be about like how I try to work and put other people on. So like if we can, let's use this opportunity to like, maybe I could highlight three other voices. And I was able to pull in like two really dope guys that I admire a lot and a female artist as well who had just said in her studio, like, I'm so frustrated. No one looks at me. It's like all these different things. They keep getting my art wrong. It's like, yo, you want to do it? I mean, everything wasn't perfect, but it was my way of being like, man, like, I don't want to, I, I like, I think if I keep ego in check and I always stay a little bit like reserved or behind the scenes, it's going to stay fun for me. Being looked like at for a certain thing really kind of f***s you up because then you don't get to like make public I started to say that all the time. I'm like, you don't get to make public decisions. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to like do what other people think is best for you versus like what you're learning is best for mm -hmm. you. I don't know. No, that's yeah. People like be like, come outside for this party, and I'm like, dude, I'm physically done. Done. Can't. But in their mind, like, you gotta meet this person. You gotta do this. That always. I gotta introduce you to another guy who likes art. I'm like, bro. I'm like, I, I know enough people. So like I'm, I'm both. I'm, I'm the most extroverted introvert. I'm not even introvert. I'm, let's be real. I'm not introvert, but I'm the most extroverted, shy person you'll ever probably, you know, in this world. I'm with you on that, man. Yeah, I mean, you know is, what I mean. But is it being extroverted and shy, or is it being like, yo, I'm extroverted, but I'm extroverted to people that are on my wavelength that can have the conversation that I could have? Because I'm That's an fair. introverted. I'm introverted as. F but if I'm with the right crew of people, I'll f***ing talk the whole time and sit for hours on end. Otherwise, it's like, I want to be a hermit in my little hole. Don't f*** Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like, yeah, no, yeah, no, I like yeah. going to like a, a premiere or something that has to do with film. And I feel like I'm in my element. I can have yeah, conversation. You, you yeah. But if you if you ask me to go to somebody's housewarming party, I'm like, stop. That's great. I'm like, I, don't know what, I don't know what to say. I don't know who I am. Who the f*** am I, you know? I also say, I like hanging out with you guys, your yeah. crew, because yeah. that's when I like when I am with family, I or not even family. I like being uh, with old, not much older, but like older people. Cause it's like, then you can just kind of just chill. And they're like, oh yeah, yeah. Like whatever, like you're chilling you're taken care of. I'm only on when I'm in the art, when I have to like make the space feel right for other people. And immediately when I'm off stage, like that's how I think about it in my head. I'm like, yeah, oh, that, that, that's my thing. <laughs> yeah. bro. I like that you say when, you know, you like hanging out with older people. I used to like not like it. Like I didn't know how to talk to someone that was older than me who was more wise. Oh, wow. And I realized that I didn't have to say anything. I just had to listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love, right? I love it. You just ask you questions yeah. that you're curious about. And they're like, man, let me give you this guidance. And that's that's so invaluable. I'm always like, Back to the Future is one of my favorite movies. Come I'm on, baby, let's go. <laughs> I'm always looking for my Doc Martin in the room. You know, Doc Hell Brown. Yeah. I'm like, um, I don't know. I'm just like something about like someone just giving you free game. It's like, it's it's so dope to me. It's so easy. And actually, funny enough, I just, like I said, I looked up and now I have people who are looking for looking to me for that. So I just use my honest story. Like, I literally always That's come back important. to like, yeah, bro. I'm like, I was on the bus. I did what I did. It, it won't make sense for a long time until it makes perfect sense, yeah. Oh, yeah, you know? Absolutely. And so that's where I'm at right now where I'm like, I look around the city, I look in the art world, I go to places and I'm like, yo, I work with this artist and now they're moving. They're booming. Their prices have gone from like this to like that, you know, or like... The shoes, like I could be like, I honestly am like, this is people who like I could say I'm in community with, you know, and that's dope. Yeah. So I don't know. That's, I don't that's know. awesome, yeah. man. <laughs> no, man, it's Figuring great. It like, 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 like we've been in this conversation for almost like an hour now, but it's felt like five minutes. Is it? I'm long winded. Nah, bad. No, oh, but, 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 but like, it's, but like, that's you know, it's a good combo. Like, yo, we're all just flowing because yo, we're all on the same wavelength. Like, even though we're, we're all in different parts of the arts, we're so and passionate about what we're doing that's what you connect in and when we're connected then we can go off into tangents on a million different oh, ways yeah, but it's like yeah. we have one common ground and I think once you meet people that are 
part of your tribe. It's like, sure. yo, man, like we are sitting here talking about different things. In my head, I'm like, all right, cool. Like you're you do a lot of art curation. All right, let's figure out some sort of live art thing. Yeah, let's do it. Like yeah. where 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 we're doing yeah. a podcast up. You have artists doing live art. You have me and JP doing spoken word. And like that like there's so many things that we can do to incorporate and it's just like when you find people on that level yo man that sky's the limit because bro like let's be real me and you can sit together right now and come up with a whole fucking exhibit in an hour and, and then also, i can yeah. look at the two people behind me and zeke and sophia like hey we can make this work right cool and by tomorrow we're already looking for f***ing spaces and have things going like yeah. when you have people that are like that, maker man, no, any, sure. I was oh, just man, about to... production is about to like <laughs> anything insert here <laughs> Like, but that's so cool. It's no. like, cause yo, you can make anything happen. Yeah. No, I was super inspired just coming in today, like seeing when you said it was like a brainchild idea, yeah. like for that to like come out of you guys' heads and the the level of production today, like that was inspiring to me. Cause like, that's the next part of the journey for me right now is like, all right, AJ, like you see a lot of stuff that you don't like, cool. What are you going to do differently? And it keeps coming back to like, I'm only just now in like the last week been super confident enough to say like, I want to make something. I want to make a space. Bro, you need like your make own a... reality show where somebody you follows are... you around like, <laughs> Sophia, get on that. When somebody needs you like, especially your next art curation. So I've got like, bro, you. I, I think that'd be so f***ing cool to see you in your element just like speaking to everybody and just teaching. Like, because I remember coming, you, uh, coming to see your last exhibit mm -hmm. and you were and, like, you took me and ran on a tour oh, personally. For sure. I was so excited you guys Yo, were there. But, like, yeah. <laughs> yo, I geeked the fuck out though because you were so into it. And then you're like, yo, this painting is this, this, and this. This is why this inspires me. I'm like, oh, yo, that's fucking cool. Like you inspired so, and I just remember watching you that day. You were inspiring so many people just by explaining to them because they saw the passion in you for it. Yeah. Like it was dope, man. I'm glad I took that time last year because I can take that in and actually let that be a reality versus like I used to negate that. You know, when people say positive things to me, I'd be like, oh, are you crazy? I apologize. I, I'm trying to work on it right now, like getting out of saying like, I'm sorry for anything. Like I'll be like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, like you're yeah. just always like, I know I'm not supposed to do it. I had to shake that shit out because in my mind, when I looked in these rooms, I was the only person who looked like me. And I felt like I was doing you guys a disservice or anyone who had ever spent quality time on me by like not showing up in my fullness and not letting them see me dope. You know, like I used to, it, I'm, that's what I meant with that yacht thing. Like he said, come to the fashion show. And I went to the fashion show and everybody had on like Louis Vuitton. Da, 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 da. And I was like, dude, I've never, this was before I got the show. I never even had a single stitch of that shit. I never had none of that. And I was like, so insecure. I was like, no. And I'm standing next to like billionaire rapper, like people that I'm like, I could be like, I get a picture, but I was like, you gotta act like you're supposed to be here yeah, yeah, yeah. by myself in this moment. And I got to the seat and I'm thinking like, dude, I'm probably gonna be in the bleachers, like nosebleeds. Like he sat us early in the beginning and it was like those same people who had all that drip on, they were sitting around, they were people who bought at the store who got access to the moment, but they weren't like, I had explained, I've been explaining that. And so ever since then, I'm like, dude, stop giving your power away. Hey, you need to like yeah, absorb man. this stuff. You know? yeah. It's not about those like drop name drop moments, but for sure, just for like sure. examples of like, what, do you, what are you doing for anybody if you're just gonna like shrink it or pass your like what you work for onto the next person? It's so easy yeah. to be like, no, nah, not really. Like, so now if someone says something dope about me, I try to match them back with something dope about them quickly or just earnestly take it in. Mm -hmm. for sure you know that that that's super dope man so you've had all these really really cool things and inspirational things that have gotten you here what's the thing that you're the most appreciative because like man you're so down to earth and zero ego and super chill and completely like down to earth what's the biggest thing you've learned from this that appreciates you that keeps you here i mean i just say we only have like oh. one swing of the we we're on the planet for like one turn <laughs> yeah yeah so you gotta like live it a lot of times in my like solace like in my bond by myself i'm like do it if you got an idea run it if it doesn't work oh well you tried it run it a different way you know like not be so afraid and like get it out of your head and i say this to any creative whether that's like art acting whatever music like get it out of your head let other people see it like let them respond to you differently. Like when we did that show, like how everybody else responded back to me taught me who I could be. I didn't go into that thinking I'm about to be the Fresh Prince, or whatever. Like I didn't think I was gonna be the favorite <laughs> LA AJ kid. Nah, the world told me that's what I deserved. They gave me my flowers, and it was that's why I always loved that this show was like shattered glass. Cause I'm like, dude, we took the ugliest part of the story and made it dope. 
Like it's a world that I I'm not familiar with, and I definitely and but he it, sells it. It's like, a lack of education. <laughs> yeah. Growing up, I you know I see an art exhibit or something, and I don't I'm like I don't need to go. I I can't go in there because I don't know what I'm, you know what it's feel about. That. I feel that. Yeah. So it's good, but you know. To pick your brain and to hear your story. I try to be as available as possible. Please, please, this is open invitation to anybody that's interested. Like, that's my whole brand is like art accessibility. Can you, can you let people know where to like find you, your socials, what you got? Yeah, I'm kind of low key. I'm only on social media, Instagram, uh, AJ Gerard. Um, and then I do a lot of panels. And, you know, if anything, like I have shows, please pull up to a show or two. Like, you don't have to come in with like bags of money or know anything about art history. Just pull up. That's like my whole, that is my whole like thing. Just come. That's it. Yeah. Message. <laughs> We're definitely going, and we uh, and we definitely encourage everybody else to go as well. I, I, I can honestly sit here with him for another two hours and just keep no. going on all of this, shit, man. Like. But yo, man, thank you so much for being on. Definitely look forward to collaborate with you because we're definitely going to yeah. figure something yeah, yeah. out. It has to be done. But uh, yo, man, thank you so much for coming on. We greatly, greatly appreciate, appreciate you. Both of you. Make sure to tune in next time. We'll check you out then. Peace.